Progressive brings you Flowetry with Flow. When Flow flows, she flows in the know. Mind ruminates the rates. Shown them all, I heed the call. Seeing the rest, I choose the best. Sometimes it's ours, sometimes it's not. When the fox walks, is it called a fox trot? That's a real question. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors rates. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Blog Talk Radio. I almost said good afternoon. This is probably a sign that I'm either not getting enough sleep or I've forgotten what day it is or I spent too much time in New York City a couple of weeks ago. Hello, friends, fans, followers, etc. It's a lovely, lovely, almost 90-degree weather here. I hope it's nice where you are. I want to do a couple quick reminders before I start with Sonia because I'm so excited to have her on the show. I don't think she has any idea of how much I absolutely adore her and her work. A um, couple quick reminders about tomorrow. Um, we're going to be having a show at 4.30 Central Standard Time. I don't want to forget to mention it, first of all, because it's a local band, and I love, love, love promoting local people. Head Knocker Rocks is going to be coming on. In case those of you don't know, Thomas Edward Hunter, along with five other guys in the group, put together a foreigner tribute band. And if you follow me, you already know that um, foreigners like on my top five list of all bands of all time ever. And they're hosting um, part of a benefit on Saturday that they're going to be participating in. So they're coming on the show tomorrow to promote that. We're upcoming gig at Wisconsin State Fair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So please tune in, 4.30 Central Standard Time tomorrow. Then I'm off all weekend. Um, keep uh, looking at my personal page as well as the show page for updates on, am I going to Vegas, am I not going to Vegas? We still don't know what's going on with the comic, comic book convention. Yeah. So please stay tuned as far as that goes. I don't want to forget to remind everybody, do check today. The page is going out today. Kerwin's comic book is finally ready to be sold to my friends. So I'll put up a big page. You guys can check everything out. Last note before we get started with Sonia is I want to remind everybody to check the Art of the Live Film Festival, which you know my film festival is coming up. We've had a change of date and a change of location. Um, so please check that out. Probably sometime late this afternoon would be my guest because my beautiful daughter is coming over after the show unexpectedly. So I'm excited. So without further ado, I want to get this beautiful, wonderful, talented lady on the line to start talking to her. Good morning, Hello. Sonia. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Uh, well, there's a lot of talking there, intro. you know, when the show starts. <laughs> well, you have to, like, get everything in all at once because people don't get a hold of me, and then they're like, what's going on? And I'm like, okay, just listen to the show, and I'll tell you everything. So here <laughs> right. you are. I'm so nervous. I'm so excited and I'm so nervous at the same time. You're a really big deal. You are such a big oh. deal. Oh, no. You this are. Is great. I'm just so excited to talk to you. This is going to be fun. <laughs> well, it is. Um, you know, I always get really nervous about, you know, I've, I've gotten a really nice following over the course of five years, and I always get really neat, interesting people. And when I spoke to Carol yesterday, she said, you're going to fall in love with this Sonia girl. You're just going to love her so much. She's like friend first and client second, and I like to hear that. So I'm really super excited. And I have a lot to talk oh. about, and I've done my homework, so I know a lot about you. Um, oh, boy. So first, I want to <laughs> okay. know, well, that's my job. I'm a journalist. I'm supposed to know that stuff. But that's okay. I want to kind of you know, These days, I always get nervous about. when people say that. I'm like, is, you, people can find out everything about you now. <laughs> You're like, oh, God, what do you well, know? Well, trust me. <laughs> this isn't TMZ. Oh. We're not going to be talking about anything X-rated. We're not going to be going there. We're not going to be doing any of those things. Although there's that American Playboy thing, which we will talk about. Um yeah. So, just so you know, we're going to bounce around a little bit. We're going to talk about who Sonia used to be and then, of course, talk about who you are now, obviously, because you've had some changing career and some changes and different things. So I want to kind of introduce sure. my audience to all of you, if I could. Yeah, um, please. First of all, talk to me a little bit about two different things you used to be involved in. First of all, you're the president of the Federal Toastmasters and the National Speakers Association of New York City. So how did you find yourself commingled with those organizations, and what did you get out of that experience? Gosh, you know, I think it was um it was after right around right after I had my first daughter, um or my only daughter. So I have a son too, but my first child, right. uh I had been on a little bit of a hiatus because when you're pregnant you're not really working as much. And I I had thought about spe doing you know, speaking or just getting better at speaking. I was coaching. I had decided to get a life coaching certification while I was pregnant just because why not? I was it was something to do and I had always had a life coach, and, and uh, I guess I learned a lot from that, and, and people often would come to me sort of for advice, so I thought, well, let me figure out how to really do this. <laughs> and, um, and through that, I ended up at Toastmasters, and while I was there, 
I met a guy who was a professional speaker, and I had no idea that actually was a profession, that people got paid to do that. And so I thought that was really fascinating because I love the life coaching a lot because I'm so passionate about helping people and seeing people really right. go for their dreams. And um, <laughs> and then, but, you know, there's something very uh, solitary about life coaching because a lot of it's done to sit home on the phone. And so, you know, you just go from one phone call to the next phone call. And I was missing a little mm-hmm. bit, maybe of the acting side where you're sort of out and about. So it seemed the perfect blend for me of having the chance to do some speaking and, and coaching and, and a way that was sort of satisfying the acting as well and uh so that was when I got involved with the National Speakers Association and suddenly just catapulted to the top and became president there so (laughs) I got that no um, I understand it was a quick I got involved very fast (laughs) and there's nothing wrong with that as a matter of fact I think you know you're one of the better candidates and I'm not just saying that the reason I see that is because oftentimes when you when you take a podium like that or you get involved with something like that you really need to be very versatile, very articulate, and very able to reach a large audience. And, and from what I hear, based on the things I've heard about you, you do tremendously in the professional speaking realm. Um, so I want to ask a question about that. Now, when yeah. it comes to doing personal speaking, when you do a lot of this life coaching stuff, do you find that people are more moved when you pick up the phone and you speak to them or when you're doing a live event? How do you reach your biggest audience? What do you th- where do you think that comes in? Which package? Wow, that's a really great question. Um, I, I think it's very different because I think you go deeper and much more personal when you're on a life coaching call. Um, sure. And so you're able to, to impact in a different way. And I think when you're speaking to a larger audience, you tend to you can still impact in a very deep way because there's something about the collective group. And so if you can really sort of tap that energetic level of of places where people really want to change and and be feel better uh there is something to having that group energy that takes it to another level that really has absolutely nothing to do with me it just has to do with that group um and the topic and being able to be moved to another level so it's it's very it's different um i think they're both powerful in different ways i think you get more specific personally one-on-one but you can make Mm -hmm. big movements in a group yeah i guess that would be my answer did that answer that (laughs) it kind of did it's kind of a segue to my next question because of course to my listening audience they may not know this and frankly i didn't know until i found out yesterday but you actually hold a weekly twitter chat on tuesday at 11 a.m where the better life chat hashtag as i recall so that's why I was asking yeah. about reaching people because you have a Twitter platform too. So how does that work out in terms of success or effectiveness, like what we're talking about with that personal reaching? You know, that's been a really interesting journey for me because 140 characters is not a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> I you know, know it's not. You know, at first I was like, how does this work? Because someone had suggested it as right. a forum for me, and I was just like, that just doesn't seem like it makes any sense. But it's been really interesting, and the, the, we've just covered so many amazing topics, and we really have a, a, a great group of people that just keep coming, and, and everybody kind of offers their, their opinion and their thoughts, and, and I'll respond to every person as, as best as I can and, mm-hmm. and interject my thoughts and my kind of coaching ideas. And now I've added um, – most weeks, not every week, but most weeks I'll do a, a 10 minute periscope of, about the topic. And oh. then, so I can okay. talk a little deeper about something and then we'll move into the Twitter chat. And so I get to hear other people's comments and everybody can kind of join in and share. And, you know, there's a lot to be learned by everybody. Uh, so it's kind of been a little, it's been a nice mix for me. It gives me an opportunity to say a little more than 140 characters. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, so I told you. Everybody I get else it. an opportunity to, to kind of chime in and participate. Sure. Now, because, and forgive yeah. me, I'd like to consider myself a smart woman, but I'm technologically stupid. So let's say Tuesday rolls around <laughs> next week, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go listen to Sonia, or we're going to do this whole Twitter chat thing. So just tell my audience, and me too as well, so if we want to tune in next week on this Better Life chat, like I'm on a Twitter, let's say I have my Twitter account, so I sign in, what do I need to do yeah. to get connected with this Twitter chat? Yeah, so you can go go to my Twitter, so at Sonia Satra, okay. 
And the link will be there. Um, next week I will be doing a Periscope, so you can click on the link and that will automatically take you to the Periscope so you can watch me live and you can enter some questions. Um, I tend to answer them more on the Twitter chat just because the Periscope goes oh. so quickly. Um, but you can throw out some questions there as well. And uh, and then afterwards, go back to my page with the, with the hashtag, hashtag Better Life Chat, and just join in. We post questions. You can follow the questions and answer those questions and see what other people say and comment on what they say. And it, it literally is a chat on my feed. Is what it really is. Oh, it's so, okay. I get it. it so now I'm understanding it because I'm like stupid. Than it is, yeah. No, you're not stupid at all. I had no idea what it was either when I started. I was like, how does this work? <laughs> you know? And so, oh my god, it's, well, it's look not, at this. We're learning. It's not as complicated, and you can always just go on and watch it if you want just for the first time. Although I'd much prefer you join cool. in because I love to hear other people's comments. Oh, oh of course, because um, you want feedback and and you want people participating. I totally get it. That's why I figured we should touch that base right now. So this. If people are listening in now and they want to listen on Tuesday, they'll be able to know how to do that. Now, my next question is going to make you blush, so I'm going to prepare you now. Um, Anytime I post up who I'm having on my show, because, you know, we have about 61,000 people that listen, um, they saw your picture in your IMDb profile. And, of course, I have about half my male legion saying, oh, my God, she's breathtaking. Does she have a husband? So we should talk about your husband because, yes, you do have a husband. Yes, boys, she has a husband. She's completely married with children. So I do. Let's talk about Stephen a little bit. Um, tell us about Stephen. Sure. The, the personal side of Stephen, because we all know, or I know, he runs, of course, Stephen David Entertainment. Yes, he does. He runs a, a fairly large now um, a production television production company, and has sort of become known for these docu series that he does. Mm-hmm. Um, but what is he? You know what? Really and truly, he's a funny smart guy and I think what has made him so incredibly successful is that he's equally brilliant at business and creative like he just oh has a wicked mind it's just it's a and he's you know I think oh, I don't know man maybe I should I don't know how much I'm supposed to say here but you know I think he he experienced a lot of um death in his family like his mom died his sister died his grandmother died his stepmother died and so I think there was an element of like Life is short, and his stepmom always used to say, life ain't no dress rehearsal, you know, and so he really lives that, (laughs) and um, (laughs) it's like, you know, you got to take a chance, because you don't know what tomorrow is going to be, there may not be one, and uh, he really, really lives that, I admire that a lot, but he's just, um, Mm -hmm. he takes very smart, calculated risks, but he's, he's so freaking brilliant creatively, like he wakes up with a song every day. Every day he Aww. wakes up with a weird song. Like it does all kinds of music <laughs> genres. <laughs> and he oh, then he creates scenes from that song. Like that's usually the really? beginning of this project. Yeah, it's it's okay. crazy. I wish I had that brain, but I don't think that way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but he really does. Well, that's a little piece of him. <laughs> Well, and and I appreciate that because I've always I have always said oftentimes when my guests come on that oftentimes it's what happens at home that helps to establish what how it happens outside of the home. Meaning, if you have a nice, solid, and happy foundation at home, and that person and that backing and that support you have at home, fundamentally speaking, you're going to be far more successful outside of the house. That's just my personal belief. Although I'm single, what the hell do I know? I still don't have a husband, but we're not even going to go there. But I wanted to talk about him because it's, you know, it's, it's part of you, obviously. It's part of your life. And, of course, we have to talk about your two kiddos because you're a mom to yeah. two children. So let's talk about the kids. So how do you manage, because I'm a working mom myself, so how does that work out? How do you guys fluctuate schedules and scenarios so this way you're still mom and he's still dad and everything works as it should? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I'm not sure it always works as it should, but um, oh. it's, it's a constant yeah. uh, calibration, I think. Um, in the beginning, I definitely did more, you know, and, and I think part of also what made us work is so well is that he was he was sort of so such a dynamo, and I was a great coach for him. You know, he was like the ultimate coaching student, and so I would coach him, and he'd go do it. <laughs> Like wow. he'll often come back and be like, I never would have made it where I am today without you, you know, that sort of, and I feel very Aww. much the same way about him, but it, that was a really nice thing. But I think now he's a little, um, he's got a, he's 
he's got a little more time, and so he definitely is um, able to sort of participate and balance out, and I go off and do things a little bit more now. So it's a little more even paced. But, you know, it's 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 always been this sort of give and take and balance, and um, the kids are so important to us, and I, you know, I wasn't one of those women who was like, I need kids yesterday. Like, I was really nervous about it because I knew that we were both <laughs> really? entrepreneurial, and I... I was, and I was like, I, I, it's, I, I love, my mom was just the most incredible mom, and like, I, I, I wanted to be that, and I, and I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to be, and so I, I really knew that, that it was going to require time and dedication, and I wanted to be that mom, and so, and I wanted him to be that dad, too, like, I didn't want to do it on my own, so I think, you know, we've worked, we've worked really hard at it. We, oh, we have it so lucky. We're such incredible kids. I just was in London with my son. He's nine years old. And, oh, my gosh, this kid was just a dynamo. It didn't matter what we did. Churchill rooms to, like, climbing the O2 stadium. You know, he was just as excited. <laughs> you know, he was such a Oh, dancer. that's so sweet. <laughs> now, you know, I was great. I have four children, and two are grown and in college, and my two that are at home are 10 and 12 years old. So, of course, we have this craze. So I have to ask you to raise this big or not, right? Right? I know. Look at my picture. I'm old. You'll see. But, no, they they are the blossoms. You can handle four kids. That's all I have to say. And you can actually speak English. You have no idea. Trust me. (laughs) Well, and it's – I don't think people realize it's not so, you know, because I juggle different things. I'm a writer like you are, and I have the radio show, and then I have this film festival and all these other things going on. And so self-employment's great, but yet you still have to juggle the kids. And, and my two ones that are at home are at 10 and 12, and they're both boys. So, of course, I've always believed oh, wow. the heart of the girl. Oh, my good God. They're giving me gray left, right, and sideways. So here's my question. Have you guys hit that? fidget spinner craze where they have to have every form, every kind, and they have to have 12 of them. <laughs> Seriously, yes. right? Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And they had him in London, mm-hmm. too, of all different shapes and sizes and everything. And it was just, right? oh, oh, my God. He was having it like, oh, I have to have all of these. I'm like, how many things have you got? I can't spin that many. <laughs> I can't yeah. even spin them, period. I'm like, I don't even know how you do this. And then my one 10-year-old purposely takes the pieces out, and then he, like, toys with me. like, Mom, I'm going to put them in my mouth. I'm like, don't go there. Because they were having recalls. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, like, paint recalls. And, like, somebody was choking on them. Oh, stuff. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, I'm have a heart attack. So, okay, so your house right. is, is literally obliterated with fidget spinners, too. So I'm not the only one. Totally. Okay, like every color, color shape, yeah, size, we got them. <laughs> no, I totally understand what you're saying. I totally, totally get it. So, you know, it, it's good to hear that, and I'm glad that I'm not, not the only abnormal mom that's out there that's going absolutely nuts picking that stuff up off the floor, which is neat. No, um, I want to talk. <laughs> yeah. And what I've learned is you really can't put them back together again either because he's pulled them apart, oh and then he can't get them together. Right. And then, of course, we need another one to replace the 12 that he's already taken apart and can't get back together again. So, oh, my God. Listen yeah, to that. I got it. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is that obviously what I've noticed is over time – these guys, I don't know how your kids are, but my kids are totally bored with things constantly. Like, they'll have it for a month, and they're like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I've had it for three yeah. you know, three days, three weeks, and all of a sudden the toys get to be a boredom thing. You have to do something else. It's interesting. But since you brought up yeah. your parents, I want to speak about that, obviously. I know that your parents were not only both professors, one being Norwegian, one being Austrian, which is such a neat mix. But, of course, I believe that that's allowed you to travel the world and see all sorts of things that some of us never get a chance to see. So maybe tell me a bit about what your parents have passed on to you, both personally and professionally. Well, I have to say, so, yeah, it is a very interesting mix. And I think um, my dad was a a brilliant guy. Um, He he had doctorates in, like, five different countries, five different languages. He spoke seven different languages. Really brilliant intellectually, emotionally, uh, maybe not as good. But um, so he actually left when I was born, so really wasn't a part of our life. He would come home every once in a blue oh. moon, every couple of years. Oh. And so I, it's, I can't say that I have, like, a huge impact from him other than I did go on my little father quest when I was 21 and met him, and I was just like, wow, it's amazing how much it's still passed down through genes. <laughs> that's, like, a different thing. Ah, that's right. um, but for, my mom was amazing. She was so, so, so fabulous. Um, she's just the most, I think I got my whole adventurous spirit from her. She just is one of those people that's 
you know, loves to travel, loves to understand people, loves to see how people live and their cultures and is just completely, um, she's just fascinated by all that. She was a history professor, so I guess that was a right profession for her. And so we didn't have a lot of money, but somehow she managed to scrape by and like we would, you know, go to youth hostels and we would still travel a lot of the world because she really felt that 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 was an important part of experiencing things. And she also felt like, you know, if the locals can get there, so can we. So I went to Egypt once and I was literally on a bus with the turkeys and the goats and the sheep and whatever else was in the back of the bus. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. We were clearly God. the only foreigners on that bus. But, you know, we did get to where we wanted to go, so she was right. Um, but there cool. was always that sense of life and exploration and adventure that she she brought to to our family. And, uh, you know, she was a, she was a great mom. She was really there for us. And, you know, I don't know how she did it as, I mean, single mom, that's like my heart, my hands right. out. So you got, it is so much work. I have just like hats off so much admiration for anyone who can pull that off. It's, it's so much. It really is. And now as a mom, I really have a whole other appreciation of it. But, um, you know, we were close growing up, and there was a fairly big age group, uh, age distance, eight years and five years between my other sisters and I. So she and I spent a lot of time together, and we did a lot of traveling together. And uh, those are very special memories for me. Oh, I imagine so, definitely. And plus, too, I would also assume as you being mom, you've taken on that role somewhat. And so you're kind of giving your children life adventures, you know what I mean? Because I see all the various things that you're doing, not only physically but mentally, of course. And one of the things that I admire that you had mentioned, besides because I've done mountain climbing myself, I don't think I could do the boxing thing, but I have to ask you about this painting <laughs> thing because, again, I suck. I mean, I'm a great writer, but give me a paintbrush, and I'm like, I suck at this. So does this mean Sonia will tell me just do a wine and paint night and then I'll just learn everything there is to know or like am I just kind of out of luck? Because I would love to learn how to I, I, I didn't really say that I was great at it. I just said that I did it. <laughs> really yeah, it's on the resume, but I only do it. Once in I, only do it. I get it now. Um, okay. You know what? Uh, one of my um, – my dear friends and uh, and publicist, she, unfortunately she passed, but from back in my, my Guiding Light days, uh, she was a painter, brilliant artist, holy mackerel, and oh. she was a big encourage. She would literally send me, like, you're going to do this. This is something you must do. So that was really how I started, and she was, she just said, it doesn't matter what it looks like at the end, just paint what you feel. And so that was really how I started. It was just paint what you feel. And, um, and so sometimes it, you can't quite tell what I'm feeling from those paintings, but they reflect in some way. Um, but so, you're yeah, doing it, though. You're, you're quitting fine. my day job. But it was a nice, it was a kind of an interesting expression uh, that, I, sure. that I really did, uh, enjoy, that I do enjoy and I appreciate. My daughter's actually really talented. She, she's got the talent. I just do it for fun and as a, as a means of just... Uh, expressing in a different way. Expression. You should try it. Sure. Try that. Try that exercise. Don't Enjoy. edit it. Don't, like, judge it. Just paint whatever you're feeling and allow that to be beautiful. Oh, I'm going to try. I, I'm I'm going to give it a try. I'm not going to lie about that. Now that I've – I'm 47 now, and I've come to find uh, that as you age, you start to come closer to yourself, and, and we're going to get into that because I, I had an enlightenment true. when I was in – well, I was in New York City recently, and I had a very big enlightenment, so it's very ironic that you're on my show, because my enlightenment has everything to do with what you subscribe to, and, and we'll get into that, so it's interesting. But yeah, I, I'm yeah. always looking for something that's creative. I've kind of found my inner hippie now, which is kind of weird to my kids, because they're like, <laughs> Mom, you're just really cool, but weird. And I'm like, I know, right? I'm just trying to figure it all out. Thanks. We're on that journey together. Thank you. <laughs> now, the one other thing I want to talk about pers- from a personal standpoint, if you don't mind talking about it, um, because I think sure. I use my show platform to talk about things that are beneficial to people. You know, like, for instance, I'm, I'm a 30-year bipolar patient, and, and everybody that knows me knows I have a mental health issue. So I call myself crazy in the best way possible. And I'm like, I don't get upset anymore when people think I'm nuts. I'm like, it's fine. I own right. a tag right. that you think I'm crazy, and that's fine. Now, I know that at one point in time, you had some bad of- I, I have. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I cut you off there. Other than it's interesting because I, I know a lot of bipolar people, and there are just so many brilliant qualities that bipolar people have. And I just think that that's just a part of like 
what makes you special. So you can be crazy and special at the same time. There you have it. <laughs> I'm special today. <laughs> Yesterday's guest said I was a nobody. He's like, everybody's a nobody, but he's a great director. And he's like, we're all nobodies. And we're very human, you know, very humane and very humble. But no, I, I have learned to live with the fact that people are not always going to understand that. Plus, I think there's a link between mental health issues and creativity. I really do think the brain and, and the mental health thing, you know, kind of spark that creativity. So I'm not necessarily feeling as bad as I used to. I still a little, yeah. but it's a work in progress. I wanted to bring this up because I know you had mentioned in one interview at some point, which I didn't know, that you used to have a, a personal issue. Uh, and, and if you don't want to speak about this, you don't have to. But I had I thought mm-hmm. there are women that listen to the show, and I know that you had battled anorexia at one time. And so I wasn't sure how comfortable mm-hmm. you were with talking about it or maybe just sharing if somebody's listening today and maybe struggling with something, some of the things that you've taken away from that experience. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm 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 happy to talk about it. Um, oh, I uh, and I and I wish I had some just brilliance about it because it's such a sure. such a deep struggle. It really is, and I think it it was many 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 years. I would probably say decades of a journey to really move through it completely. I think there are times I still like. When things are unsettled, my go-to control is food. You know, it doesn't manifest in that way. You know, it's certainly not a problem anymore, but it's still in in the instinctively a bit of a habit. Um, but it is a control. It is a bit of a perfectionist thing, and it is a um, and it's not real and god i wish i wish i wish i could just tell somebody no not to think that it's such a if i could get back the hours and hours and hours of time i obsess over calories and fat grams and fat and weight and just picked apart my every ounce of my body it's just it's such a oh such a waste (laughs) oh no I understand but it's real it's like it's a very real it's real um and it's uh I would just I I guess I would if anybody knows somebody it's very hard to go seek out help for yourself because you just aren't in that frame of mind to be like I have a problem by the time you're able to seek out help you're already on the road to recovery, I think. So it really almost requires some form of intervention, I think, by other people who just have to get you professional help because it's such a a mind, body, soul, complicated disease that um, it, it really needs professional professional help. Sure. I mean, I, I actually got lucky I sort of snapped, I, I mean, snapped, I snapped out of the worst place. It was a, a, I still do get emotional when I talk about it, but it was a Thanksgiving and my sister was coming oh, home. sorry. And I was so excited. No, and I'll share it for anybody who could be useful for it, but I, I was so excited because I, you know, I think you, you tend to, you go internal. You just become and you live in this world of aloneness. And all you think sure. about is food and calories and burning it off. And there, it's a very lonely and internal world. And I was so close to my sister who had gone off to college. And so I was excited about her coming home. And she walked in the door and she just looked at me. And I was at that point like my lowest weight. I had, I had gone under to about 78, 79 pounds. And she was just horrified. And she literally dragged me into the bathroom and made me stand on the scale. When she saw what I was, she was just like, what are you trying to do? Kill yourself. And it was something about seeing somebody I loved so much, so freaked out and so like literally like, am I trying to kill myself? Like, no. And I just remember thinking, no, I'm just trying to be thin, you know, but there was, it was that moment where I saw that I was killing myself and I'm forever indebted to her for that moment because it really was enough in that moment for me to not want to die. I never wanted to die. Like I only wanted to live. I just wanted to live as a thin person 
And I think she made me see that I was steps away from killing myself. Um, and that was, yeah, everything contra- contrary to who I was and what I was about and what I believed. And so, you know, she really helped me, you know, and we made these little goals of like, okay, you, you know, you'll gain one pound and we'll do this together and you do this. And, and then I just got up to like a level that was safe and I stayed there for the longest time. And then I got to another level that was safe and then we stayed there for a long time. And then it was, you know, years of sort of getting to those plateaus that were safe, but I never dipped into, you know, hospitalization, but I was, my mom was about to take me because I was there. And I've known, sadly, like older, not older, when I say older, 20, 30, 40 year old women who are good friends of mine die from anorexia. So it's just, and I can spot it like a second away. I can just see people. There's like this hollowness in their eyes of just, they're distant, they're gone, they're vacant because they're in this whole internal battle with themselves and it's, Oh, get help. Get anybody you know the help that you can, I guess, is my best advice. How is that for talking about it? (laughs) Well, that's perfect, and I'm so sorry. And I'll I'll tell a joke because it's getting very heavy here. But nonetheless, no, I I have someone that I love very much who has struggled with this for a very long time, and I've watched her. And and just so you folks know, the person I know happens to be in the celebrity realm, but it's not a celebrity disorder alone and it's not something that's equated to a certain age, wow. to a certain look, to a, you know, a, ter- a certain nationality, whatever have you. And I watch her and I see how she keeps telling me how she's so fat. And I, and I'm, and all I can say is, you know, you need to look at yourself. You need to look at yourself and you just can't get it across. It's almost something that really, even your loved ones cannot, you know, we can only push you so far, but it really needs the help of others. You, you need to go see someone. You need to be proactive about it. And you need to remember that you're important. And I'm so glad and thankful to that person that helped you because otherwise you wouldn't be here right now and I'd probably be crying because you have no idea how excited I was to talk to you. So it's a blast. <laughs> well, thank you. So, yeah. yeah. Well, no, don't worry. I'm, yeah. I am, I, I'm, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me how people can get stuck in a disorder or, or somewhere and, and not get out of it. So kudos to you on doing that. And thank you so much for surviving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is absolutely wonderful. Because you'll find out later on that I'm kind of a fan of yours. I'm so not being a fan. I'm so proud of myself. I'm like, so not being a fan right now. But it's my show, so I can do that. I'm like, awesome. So before we get to some of the other yeah. things, I want to talk a bit about this because I myself am a writer. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how often you get a chance to write anymore because I know you're part of the Writers Guild, so I have a two-fold question. First of all, tell me how much time that you can squeeze writing in and what sort you do. And then second of all, I have a lot of friends that are writers, and there's always a tip-top coin choice, which is, What's the benefit to being in the Writers Guild? Because a lot of people are on the fence about be in the Guild, don't be in the Guild, meaning be in the union versus not. So if you could talk a little bit about that, that would be great. So I'm going to have to ask a question here because I actually am not in the Writers Guild, and I'm actually not even like a script writer. I'm so sorry because I, in my research it says you are. <laughs> Somewhere in, in the, in the universe like, it says it does. It says you're a part of the know, Writers I'm Guild. Thinking, Just did so you I know. write something? No, I mean, I've definitely written, you know, and I write I'm obviously for my business now, and I'm writing a book, right. but I'm, I would never, uh, I'm, I'm not like a script writer, so it's a, sure. it's a great question, the whole guild thing, not the guild thing, because it's a very right. tricky thing right. in this, this working world right now, because it's changing I know. so fast, it is unbelievable and it's just not what it used to be and so and sadly I don't think the guilds have have gone at the speed that they need to go and so I would say right. across the board whether it be acting writing any of them like I think they're still holding on to sort of uh, old old ways and I would they're going to lose because they're just mm. not moving fast enough and so I know what's the right answer I don't, like get your guild to like get on board with the times or you got right. some shit to be with the times, you're not going to work. <laughs> you no, no, I agree with you 100%, and now I feel like a complete ass. Because no, obviously I pride I'm myself on, I, I did all this research. Your research. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Because obviously yeah, during the writer's field, I didn't know it. There. It says that, that I okay. am. That's exciting. I would love to be in the writer's guild. 
I was like, this well, is somewhere, in, somewhere in the <laughs> internet land, it says you are. So you could just pretend, basically. Well, that's me, and it's your picture. You it literally is your picture, and it says that that you're in the guild. And I tell people this when I'm doing research because, like, for instance, here, if it's not true, you really have a right to know that it's out there, and people have said that. Not that it's the worst thing in the world, but you should know that somewhere out there, totally. I found that Absolutely. you are in the writers' guild. You bet. Well, congratulations on that. Thank and you now very we'll much. I'm very proud of that accomplishment. <laughs> I, uh, yes, I'm. I'm, tr- I'm so proud to know someone in the Writers Guild. That's not. That's okay though. Um, <laughs> so we want to talk about before we get to the thing I can't pronounce, which you'll have to pronounce, which is your creation. I want to obviously. I told my listening audience that we all recognize you from this very, very old show a long time ago called Both One Life to Live and Guiding Light. First of all, you were one yeah. of my favorite people on that show. Besides. <gasps> I was such a huge fan of Kim Zimmer and Linda Dano. Did you know either one of them? Mm. <gasps> they make me nervous. You know, it's, no, I worked with Kim at the end of, of my time on Guiding Light. She came back. and okay. I, Well, I was a fan of hers before, and I just love her. I think she's, I both of them are so and such incredibly talented actresses. Um, but she is just such a fun person. She's Absolutely, what you see is what you get. <laughs> nice, I, I figured. Him. <laughs> She's just really, really great, and she was really supportive of me. So I mean, that was super oh, nice, nice, and and I appreciated that. But um, I love her. I never worked with Linda Dano, unfortunately. She was another really? one I was on One Life to Live. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. Well, you know, and I kind of figured that that was the case. Of course, you, you know, you all can't work with one another at the same time. But they're they're acting. I just looked at them, and I always thought, you know what? There's such intensity with these actors. You know, you can see it in their in yeah. their face and in their poise and how they perform, etc. And it was very impressive to me. Whereas you are not as I don't know if you've ever noticed this. Cause have you watched yourself on the show? Which I assume you do, or, do, or are you one of those actors that are like, I don't watch me. I do hate it, but I have done it. <laughs> I'm one of those people. <laughs> Well, Sonia, what do you think of you? I'm just curious because I think we know what I think of you. But what do you think of you? Oh, God, that's a horrible question. I don't know how to answer it. No, it's not. You know, my mom actually did me a favor. She actually, she taped everything. It's so funny because we didn't even have a TV when I was growing up. And so it's so, and my husband jokes about it all the time. He's like, you know nothing about pop culture. I don't know how you ever made it in this business. And it's kind of true. And so I, you know, I just, I just wasn't very good about it. But she ended up becoming, you know, she was so funny. She was like, oh, okay, a lot, you know. And then it was like, oh, well, I have to watch around you. And then, you know, when I left and she was still watching, I knew she had gotten hooked. But she took all of my stuff, and then she cut all of my scenes out and put them all together. So it was just just me. Oh, <laughs> so, nice. And I That's remember so Anastasia though. saying, just sit down, have a glass of wine, and just watch, you know. And um, and so I took her advice on it. And after a glass of wine, it wasn't so bad. The first couple scenes, like the first few sits, that wasn't so good. But it got better. <laughs> and, you well, know, I and think there were definitely – scenes that you're like, oh, that could have been done better, and there are other scenes where you're like, oh, wow, I thought that was going to be terrible, and that was actually pretty good, you know? So I think I'm I'm often surprised that what I felt on set is sometimes different than what I saw after the fact. Um, and then there are certainly there were scenes or storylines that I felt very proud of, and then there were some scenes that I wish never aired, and I think that would probably be yeah. the honest opinion. I get you. <laughs> Well, I have a twofold yeah. question here because obviously, of course, I grew up watching you, which means now I'm interviewing you, which means I've I've gotten a little older. Um, <laughs> yes, I was watching no, you when you know, I was young. Cool. Now, we you don't are actually now. age like other people do, but we don't. <laughs> right, I'm at 39, <laughs> like forever. That's what I said. Like 39, yeah. I'm not going to do past 40 actually. And my birthday is next week, so I'm like, this was perfect timing too because you're like an early birthday present. Oh. And everybody else next week too. It's all these leading up things to to my show, obviously, or to my actual birthday. So I'm excited. But I want to ask about Ooh, this twofold question with the soap opera stuff. For one. Were you surprised that um, everything ceased, obviously, because I, for one, in a perfect world, I would have loved to see it continue. So was it a surprise to you? And and second of all, if you think somebody like me or someone else wanted to revitalize the soap opera era and kind of launch something that's soap opera-ish, even if it's nighttime, do you think that would still be able to succeed in this day and age? Um, First of all, 
I was surprised because when I was on, there were constantly rumors about how it was going to be canceled, it was going to be canceled, and then it never was canceled. So when I heard it was going to be canceled, I was like, yeah, we've been saying that for the last, like, 15 years. And then it actually got canceled, and I thought, no, that's not happening. Somebody somewhere is going to bail this out. It's just not going to happen. Right. And then it just went. I, I was I was stunned. I really, really was. I never ever thought that that was going to happen. Um, and then when they kind of had that, um, to bring it back, I was like, okay, cool, it's back. <laughs> it was like the world is in order again. But then, unfortunately, that had its issues and it didn't quite work out. Um, you know, there was a show, I wish I could remember what it was that my daughter was watching, and my husband was like, that's a soap opera right there. She's watching a soap opera. You know, it's just slightly more... Um, up to date, you know, but he's just like, listen to the sure. language, listen to the way it is, the storylines are the same, and he's just like, that could be what you were doing, you know, and and, and I, he was right. So do I think it, it oh, I would love it if you brought it back. <laughs> I think that really? Do you think so? I, I'm serious yes, because I'm a I huge, think I'm not, so. I, I, lie, I am not going to lie, like, I'm a huge groupie of Dallas, Knott's Landing, as like all over that, like Southern Cross, I, I used to watch Dallas General Hospital. fanatical. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm not gonna lie. To to my sister, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my God! I used to write letters to my sister about every. She was living in Australia at the time, so she couldn't see it. So Mm -hmm. every week, I would write her what happened on Dallas. Like this is what happened. Oh my! (laughs) (laughs) This is so funny. Oh my God! Well, and and now of course you know these are just staples for us. Like my daughter's 22, and I'm like, oh, you know, not planning doubts. What? I'm like, you know, what? Back in the day, and they don't have a clue about that. Right. They're totally like in another era. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So what I like to see oh, a revolution God, yeah, of it, yeah. Thing. I went to speak to a high school, and I had said that I was on a soap, and they just looked at me like, what's yeah. a soap? And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we remember. That's all that matters. We remember. Yeah. Like it was yesterday. Thank you. So yeah, am I going to try to convince somebody to do this? Yes, I am. Do I think I'm the person to write it? I have problems writing yes. here. I'm not going to lie about that. And I have to have a very close connection to that. And I've written four films already. So I'm kind of like, you know what? Doing TV would be a little bit different. I'll have to think about it. But for you, I'll think about it, definitely. But that is a perfect Thank segue you. to talking about the two projects you did. And now, The Men Who Built America, because I know you were in that. And you did The American Playboy, the Hugh Hefner story. And I was like, oh, my God, she played Gloria Steinem. Girl, you are I lucky. Know. That's awesome. Oh, my lucky. God, tell me how oh you landed God, that. right. Isn't that amazing? That's, I mean, she's such an icon. I just thought, oh. like, yes, I feel extraordinarily lucky because that was just such an amazing character to play, and it was really fun. Um, and, yeah, I just had a ball. The whole, my whole, I actually shot in New Zealand, and the whole week was wow. just, you know, one of those perfect weeks of playing her. I bungee jumped off the Auckland Bridge. I like, oh I gosh. interviewed for my other company on television, and then I went home. I was just like, this week was just a charmed week. So, yeah, oh it was pretty God, incredible. That's absolutely amazing. Now, did you get to meet yeah. Gloria Steinem herself, or did you get a chance to watch some of her work, or how did you prepare for taking on a real-life role? Because obviously this person is in existence. So how close do you think you paralleled that primary person. You know, I did not, unfortunately, get to meet her. She was supposed to speak oh. somewhere, and I was going to go and see her there. And then she had to, she, I don't know, had some personal whatever and didn't speak. So okay. somebody else was there. Um, but, sure. uh, I, you know, I watched a lot of stuff, especially because I played her at a slightly younger age. So I went back to look at right. every bit of footage that I could get my hands on from back in the day and I read a lot of of the articles that she wrote and and the things that she wrote Um, so uh, you know I I tried to capture as best as as I could who she really was and and what she was and uh, yeah Um, I guess we'll find out because I'm going to watch you tonight I only got little bits and pieces I didn't get to watch the whole thing so I'm so like going to be able to watch that and and, uh, I'm curious to see how you ended up because I've seen pictures etc so I'm like curious to see that and on the flip side you played Laura Rockefeller in The Men Who Built America now obviously that's a that's a way different character and a way different scenario for that Um, so can we watch that The Men Who Built America now how do we find that or how do I access that to be able to watch it or people that are listening in I think Men Built America is still on, it's on uh, Netflix. 
And I know. See, that's what History I thought too, Channel, but I wanted to double check. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure it's still, actually, it still does really well on Netflix. And every once in a while, right. History Channel will do uh, marathons, Men Who Built America marathons. It's a great show, okay. actually. It's a really interesting one in terms of learning the real history of those, those sort of also icons of American history and who they were and how they got started. Yeah. Look at that. So, so now um, before we get to the big the big discussion, which is and the other sorry, about the and I'll just say the other one, uh, oh. the Playboy is on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Right. That much I know because I was going to watch that on Amazon. So I'm like, I kind of have a date with you later at like 2 a.m. when I finally get home. I'm going to have a date with you watching (laughs) the Hugh Hefner story. I'm sure you probably won't be up at 2 a.m., but I'll be sitting and having popcorn and wine and watching you, just so you know. Yeah, that's my late. Watching the Hugh Hefner story at 2 a.m. Yeah. Well, my kids are gone this weekend, so I kind of am like, okay, well, yeah, what do you want to do? I'll have a date tonight, so much later we'll do that. I'm leaving the exciting life, kids. That's I am. So before we get to talking about, obviously, this this whole mind and body and combining our physical movement with our mindsets, et cetera, because we want to talk about that. That's the big thing here. I don't want to forget to mention to people that, obviously, you're a very educated individual. To those that don't know, you've gotten your BA from Rutgers University. And this question I always like to ask various people, because people stand on the opposite side of the pendulum. So I want to just find out where you are with this, meaning – some people have been through the street of life, basically, which is they didn't have a whole lot of formalized education like yourself, and they went on to pursue acting, directing, creative, whatever have you, and it serves them just fine with life experience. You, on the other hand, have had the benefactor of having a benevolent education. So my question is, um, ha- had that served you, meaning would you continue on doing further education? Has life kind of taught you just as much as um, this educational background? Yeah, I don't want to discourage the kids out there from getting an education because I do think there's a lot to be said for getting a formal education. And I think life is probably the best education you can ever get. (laughs) I agree with you. I do, 185%. As much as I appreciate the classes and the things and the calculus and biology and English classes or whatever the heck I had in my communication classes in college um, in day-to-day, I don't really use that stuff. So um, do I have a, you know, is it, was it a good experience? Yes, I'm glad I have it. And I think, but I also think that it does not have to determine your success. I think um, it's a path. And I think that um, it's not, it's a good path. Um, I, I definitely think education can get you very far. And if you want to go into mm-hmm. specific fields, you absolutely have to have it. Um, sure. And I think the more specialized you get, the more useful it becomes. Um, so I think that's important to know. I, there, I have thought about going to get um, a further a master's in positive psychology because I am interested mm-hmm. in that. Um, sure. But I, I've learned so, so much from life experience and from all of the certifications and classes and ex- extra things that I've done that um, I feel like in terms of the actual applicable knowledge of the things that I use and do today, I've probably learned it outside uh-huh. of school right. rather than inside of school, but there's a huge value to both. Sure, I gotcha. Okay, now before we start talking about your business, you have to pronounce the name. I, I don't want to sound like an idiot <laughs> because I've tried to pronounce this and I just can't do it. <laughs> Oh, it's so, it seemed so easy when I came up with it, but I've heard that since then. I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's modicized. It's really, it's a hybrid Motisized. of motivational exercise. So it's modi from motivational and size mm-hmm. from exercise. So it's modicized gotcha. is what it is. I got you. Yeah. Modicized. But okay, I understand how to say many I can people have struggled, so you're not, you're not I got you. at all. No, I understand. Yeah. So obviously, you started this back in 2014. So clearly, one of the things that I thought would be super cool is for you to start and talk about the story as to how you started this, because I think it's a really neat story. (laughs) Um, Well, I think, I mean, truly, probably the story goes back maybe even to my anorexic days of, you know, the mind-body connection. I mean, I've always had a very, very intense um, interest in mind body. It's always played a huge part of my life, whether it be, you know, in a negative and to more positive with acting mind body. Um, as I had mentioned at the very beginning, I, 
I got a life coach. I got very into Tony Robbins when I first started acting, and right. because I realized too that you get rejected a lot as an actress. <laughs> so your mindset is equally as important, if not more so, than your acting classes. Because you could be the best actress and have a terrible mindset, and you're not going to make it. So both became very, very big um, things that I studied. And so I learned a lot about it, and then I got the coaching, and, and it was still mind, body, mind, body, mind, body. And anyway, then I had kids, and I was, sure. I've also always been into exercise. I think exercise has played a huge part of my life from very early on. Again, in the beginning, maybe a little more to overkill on a negative side, but then it just became such a huge part of my sanity, emotional wellness. And in addition to, you know, you're on TV, you, you kind of need to look, good too so it definitely played a part of it but um i love physical exercise and i love um the feelings and the and the sort of mental side that comes from that like i always come up with the best ideas when i'm out for a run or i'm doing something and so there was one day when i was when i had my kids and i was just there my daughter i think it's actually both and so exercise was one of these you know run into the gym for half hour run out and that was it And I was on a treadmill, and as you know, in gyms these days, you're bombarded with TVs that you can't not look at even if you don't want to. And it was just news, bad news, bad news, bad news. And whatever the story was, it was just really depressing that day. And I thought, this sucks. (laughs) Like, I feel more negative right now than I did before. And I'm supposed to go out and have my day. I'm like, wouldn't it be so cool if you could use this time to really set your mindset, you could really visualize, because I had used visualization a lot, not only as an actress to form a character, but as a person trying to get an acting role. I would visualize a lot of my success, and I had a lot of success that way. Like, I remember visualizing getting a, a role where I was going to travel and I was going to get on an airplane and I imagined having the boarding pass. And literally three months later, I was walking down a runway with a ticket in my hand, a boarding pass. It was such a surreal moment because I was like, oh, my God, this is exactly what I visualized. Like, I'm getting on a plane to fly to New York to do a movie. This is the greatest thing mm-hmm. ever, you know. And I did that a lot. And when I did it, it worked. And when I didn't, it didn't happen as quickly, you know. And so I know the power of it. But, you know, you get rushed and you're not sitting around, I'm going to go sit and visualize for half an hour. But you should. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great if you just put it together? And so that was the beginning that day. I was like, God, I wish it would be great if you could be guided through it and maybe have some sort of class. And I was imagining what that would look like. And then I got excited and I was, was on this treadmill and I was stopping and taking notes on my phone. I even came up with the motor size that, that day, actually. <laughs> and I was like, if you combine the whole mindset with exercise, it's two in one and you just feel great and you're ready to go take on the day. And then when I started to research it, I found that there actually was a lot of science that stood behind that idea. Um, there's a, a whole protein, they call it miracle growth for the brain, that gets released when you get your heart rate up for a period of time, and it actually creates new neural pathways. And so they found that when you're exercising and right after when you're exercising is an ideal time to create and to focus and to learn. And so I thought, wow, let's harness this, time to create new powerful neural pathways that will help you achieve the things you really want to achieve. And that was the beginning of Moda Size. <laughs> wow. And I love that story because I knew that story to begin with. And I think it's important to share it because, of course, first of all, um, other people have talked about this, and I'd like you to express this a little bit, because exercise enhancing the brain, meaning that there are spots in the brain that actually are, are, are enhanced or motivated, or I'm not sure what the word is, Oftentimes when there's more physical movement and activity, it affects our brain in such a way where it's a positive nutrient for it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you yes. know what I'm talking about. Um, and I Absolutely. don't think people realize that to that extent, obviously. I'm not sure if you are. Are you familiar with the work of a man by the name of Dr. Sarno? Um, I'm not sure if I know his work, but it sounds like somebody I should know his work. No. Well, Tell me yeah, and, well, you can't. Well, he's a 93-year-old doctor, and ironically, this is what I meant. When I was in New York City, I was just there a couple of weeks ago, and I went to a movie premiere that somebody got me a ticket to, and it was called Saved by Dr. Sarnow. And 
and people like Howard Stern and some of the people in Congress, and he's had some high-profile uh, individuals. And he was of the mindset yeah. of, he was a New York City doctor who truly believed that when your mind, meaning when you are not dealing with the demons and the abuses and the things emotionally, whatever happens up top, meaning in your brain, if you're not dealing with that, it is a catalyst to bring physical pain to your body. And literally, mm. his firm belief was, you know, he, especially with people with gastroenterological, back pain, other things like that, um, carpal tunnel, he was a firm believer in, you don't need to run and have surgery. You don't need to run and have medication. What you need to do is read this book, do this, deal with what is menacing the mind, and it will ultimately affect how your body performs. Make sense? Wow. Well, absolutely. Oh, my gosh, 100%. Well, how do you yes. spell his name? S A. R- it's S A R N O. His name is Dr. John Sarno. Ironically, he passed okay. away the weekend I saw his uh, movie. He had literally just. Passed oh my away gosh! It was sad. Wow. And let me tell you, it was it was a life changer. Like literally, I came home, and I don't know if you've ever had this experience. And I know people think I'm nuts, but I'm like, I don't care. This is my enlightenment, and and I believe that during the course of this movie, someone was talking to me. Someone meaning more of a divine being that's saying, you need sure. to start cleaning out that inventory in your head. You need to start getting yourself in order. That sort of stuff. So I am huge yeah. now on the whole mind body connection, and so that's why I I kind of want to have you accent so much on. What sorts of things should we be looking at doing physically that increase our not only the healthiness of our brain, but holistically speaking, just whole is, I, I don't think people have subscribed onto the belief that holistic is necessarily helpful. Do you know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of yeah. anti at this point. Would you say that's a fair estimate? I would. I mean, I think there is definitely a huge movement. There's both. There's a movement that is moving towards it, and then there's definitely sure. a huge resistance of, of, of people that don't. It's it's not quick. It's not easy. It's not, let me take a pill and feel better. And so right. it's discarded a little bit, um, I think, too quickly because I, I, I'm with you. I'm a 100% firm believer. I think the mind is just unbelievably powerful as is the body right. you know the body is a miraculous organ it just that you really break down what it actually does on a daily basis it's incredible i think i felt that when i had my kids too you know you just you give birth and you're just like holy smokes like this is unbelievable what this does you know and then you, right. you add in the mental component and the amount of control that your mind has on your body is just astounding. And so to, to discard that, I just think, is really doing yourself a disservice. And, yes, I'm a whole believer in the, in the holistic point of view. I think it's what you feed it, how you treat it, what you think, and, and, and what you do on a daily basis. Um, I think, you know, we, we walk around with a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of repetitive negative thoughts. Sure. I mean, we repeat, like, right. some of the same thoughts up to, I think, 98% of the time. You know, that's, like, such a broken record. And if they're bad, that is a really big, bad record to be playing over and over and over and over in your head. I agree. And they say no, that it's sort of a, a ratio of you need three good thoughts to overcome one bad thought. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I like, would believe that, true. actually. I don't know if it's really if the, how they can really measure that exactly, but I kind of believe it. But they have, they have you know, studies now where you can hook your, yourself up. And they, oh, I'm speaking too fast because I get too excited about this. <laughs> but like, I'm sorry. <laughs> they stick electromagnetics onto your body and you can think a big, you know, a positive thought. And they can measure that sure. in like your little toe, you know, the energy that comes out. And so, and also if you do any kind of muscle testing, if you just, as simple as stick your arm out to the right-hand side, you know, with somebody who have to do it for you, and you think of something really positive and empowering, a time when you really, like, succeeded and someone tries to push your arm down, you're rock solid. The second you are like, I'm weak or I can't do this or I'm angry or I'm anything like that, your muscles just, like, fall to pieces. Someone can push your arm down, like, in a second. And, and so it's your body instantly responding to just simple thoughts. And if it can respond to that little exercise, imagine what it does on a whole regular basis. So I agree. Yes. 
Right, and I, I feel now, like you you feel what you focus on. I think that's something I say to myself all the time. You feel what you focus on. So if you're focusing on something bad or something that makes you angry or something that makes you frustrated, that's what you're going to feel. And if you want to change it, you have that power. <laughs> so it's in you. And, that, and that's that's tough for some of us to deal with, you know, because when I first started hearing these messages, I kept thinking, oh, my God, you have no idea how not strong I am. And you get very conditioned into believing a certain mindset about yourself or you get told yeah. that over the course of time. It's really hard to change or modify your mindset to some degree. Now, I want to talk about a couple of different things that you offer through your website and obviously services that people should know about. But first, I'm curious. Because in February, you did that workshop slash pole dancing adventure, and I read that, and I thought, that girl better have her sexy on, because I'm here to tell you at 47, I think I've lost it. So I'm like, that whole pole dancing thing? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, you have to try so it. So can't do that. No. Have you looked I at me? Oh, wait, I sent you a friend request. It doesn't matter. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> I'm not young anymore. It's not I've had children, that. darling. Four of them. It not about that at all. Mm-hmm. Right. No. Maybe if I were nope. you, and I look like you, no. but I don't. No, I'm going to fight you on that one. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not about that at all. But no, all. I think I think that there is something, and I've heard other women tell me, that it's not just about building your image, meaning doing the pole dancing thing, but it's actually exercise that's energetic and it's good for you and it's healthy for you. So, so how did it turn out? Did you have a good response? How did it go? We did. It was really fantastic. It's it's such a it, it is a very and that's one of the things I love about those empowerment adventures, which is one of the things that I offer because I think I've always done these things and I've always come away with life lessons, and there is something to these. So that one in particular was really about your body, and that's all it is. It's not about whether you could climb. I don't care. I care if you ever climb the pole. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. None of it matters. Sure. What matters is that you're in touch with that piece of you, that part of you, and you just let it out. You just let it flow. And when you allow that to happen, it's just it sudden it's so freeing and it's so empowering and it's so light and and there really is a moment where you're like, Oh, I have a moment. Even if it's a moment of loving yourself and loving your body in a different way. And it's not just I'm gonna sit in a chair and intellectualize this. It's a physical experience, which is why I'm all about just put the physical to the mindset. Because sometimes if you can't get the mindset, you need to get it into your body first. So let's go get yes. it into our bodies, and then it will help shift your mind. It goes both ways. And uh, okay. so, yeah, so I do those adventures. So, so one of the other ones we do is like a trapeze, and that's all about letting go. And there's just something empowering about just jumping off that platform, and you're just letting go, and when you do it there, you can do it in any other part of your life because you'll always have that muscle memory, that, that nervous, you know, the, the, the connection within your nervous system that says, I can do this, and I have now physicalized it. I get it, you know, and, and the same with the motor size. That's what the exercise, yes, I want people to be healthy and to be in shape, but more than anything, I want them to be connected to their power, and that's what it is. It's a whole mindset process that is put to exercise and movements that are there and designed to help you make that mind-body connection. You really get it, not just sitting in a chair, but getting it into your body so you can walk out in the world and feel it as well as believe it. You betcha. Now, I want you to talk a little bit because, of course, as you mentioned, you do these women's empowerment adventures. Tell me the benefit, like let's say you look at somebody enrolled in something like that versus you you do a program called Reach the Summit, which is a 12-week coaching program. Obviously, that's mm-hmm. much more intensive, much more long-term. So what is, how does the goal differentiate between the adventure versus actually a coaching program in and of itself? So the adventure is a one day, and, you know, I say women's empowerment because that's how it started. It was a women's empowerment program. Now that I've done Modicize, I call them more Modi adventures. And, well, the pole dancing really was women. Um, A lot of them are are, are male-female friendly. (laughs) Like we kayak, Mm -hmm. we climb walls, we jump trapeze, you know, men, women, whatever can do that. Um, And they can pole dance too if they want. But 
um, <laughs> the, the, the coaching program is a little more designed over a longer period of time to really uh, focus on a particular goal that you really want to achieve over a long period of time and uh, sure. to work on every aspect of that, shifting your perspective, shifting your mindset, shifting your habits. Right. And it takes a little longer and it's, it, you know, it also covers – a period of time so that when you have the highs, that's awesome, and then maybe you'll have a setback. And so let's look at that and what caused that, and let's get you back up again. Because often people will have that big high, and then they'll go back to real life, and then they'll have a setback, and then that's where it ends. And it's life is a matter of highs and lows, and it's a matter of minimizing the lows. It doesn't mean that they're not going to happen. You just have to get up faster. Right. <laughs> and so how can we doubt. help move you? to get up faster and get you back up on your feet and and go to a higher plateau, you know, and then maybe a little yeah. bit back and then get to another plateau so that eventually you will reach the summit. You bet. And, of course, obviously setting goals and, and achievements for yourself I think is important too, knowing full well you don't, have to, you don't have to climb the entire mountain today, but at least make it part of your life goal that you're eventually going to make slow steps and eventually get to the very tip top of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, I know two of the things that you have on your website, of course. Obviously, she has a personal blog that, that is on there where she addresses certain different items. And one of the things that I thought will be helpful to other people is that whole entire section on uh, nutrition and how what you put in your mm-hmm. body helps to determine how you are. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't going to bring this up. Why? Because, like, this is a perfect question for someone like you. So let's say somebody like Cindy comes to Sonia and says, you know what, there's three things in life that I like. I like eating like junk because I'm not that fat yet. I like having a glass of wine, um, and I really hate the gym. Then you're probably like, get out of my gym or get out of wherever we can deal with you. So let's just take someone difficult like me who just refuses to give up donuts and Mountain Dew because I do, because I'm old. But, no, I, I mean, I, I – I cook for myself. I cook for my children. So I think that my health is good. But, you know, obviously I'm 47. I very recently was on a heart monitor. So you kind of get a hindsight in terms of, hey, you need to maybe do some life changes. And so I'm incorporating exercise now. But also, what would you recommend to someone like me or others listening out there in terms of what can you do, maybe even not drastic changes to your eating habits necessarily, but what can you try to implement that might just encourage you to be living healthier and more holistically? I mean, I think my number one thing in terms of eating is to is to what I like to say crowd out. So crowd out okay. the junk with a little bit more health. So add just add vegetables. Just add and add and add and add more vegetables. You can even fruits too. That's fine, but add more of that and. And maybe just reduce a little bit, one thing off of the the junk food. But just it's if you start with the adding of the healthy stuff, then partly that will a fill you up a little bit more. It will also suddenly make you feel like, oh wow, I actually feel pretty good when I eat healthy. And then you'll no, start to notice the difference of how you feel when you're eating something healthier versus how you feel when you're eating something junky. You'll also notice. A little, you'll start to notice a little more of why you're eating the junk. You know, what what emotional thing are you feeding with that? And look, I I'm kind of done with my days of being hyper restrictive, <laughs> and so sure. I am not of the belief you can never ever have another glass of wine or donut or bag of Cheetos if that's what you really love Ooh. in life. Thank um, you, Lord. And okay. if that gives you like the best feeling in the world have at it i love ice cream i'm not giving up ice cream sorry but i i don't need it every day because what becomes more important is the better feeling and so and but that really came from like really adding so much more vegetables and 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 also just studying it when you really realize and understand like what happens in your body when you eat that junk and you see how it like the just negative effects and how they're really now that they know a lot about the gut and how that impacts the brain and how right. um you're really impacting your your brain and also your emotional system i mean your diet probably is the number one uh Deter- will determine sort of how you feel in a day, like your sure. your emotional life. And so if you're feeling depressed, you probably don't want to be eating all of that stuff. And also exercise 
is the number one antidepressant. It's proven fact. The pharmaceuticals don't want to say that because they want you to keep taking mm-hmm. antidepressants. But sure. exercise is more effective than an antidepressant. Now, I'm not telling everybody to get hmm. off antidepressants. I don't want to be, like, sued for, like, no, anybody I jumping off. No, I, I get it. But it's an actual proven fact. And so if you're feeling low, at a walk, at a staircase, at a – do something fun. Is there anything movement-related that you like? Anything. You know, it doesn't have to be a gym. Some people – my mom is 85 and in the best shape I've ever known, and, like – she hates the gym. She's never spent a day in a gym, but she's out there like Thank cross you. country skiing <laughs> blind people, oh. you know? Like she literally guides blind people cross country skiing. And she's 85. You know, like there's something out there that you might like. And the more movement you do, the more you will find it starts to become a different kind of an addiction. And I would say find fun ways in which to do it, you know, instead of having your you know, five o'clock drinks, maybe take a five o'clock walk and then have a little drink at the end. You know what I mean? Like do little things that make it more entertaining. Gotcha. I started I to do yeah, walking meetings. That. If you do a walk in really? meeting, that's actually really fun. And people are like, really? At first they're just like, do I have to? And then they do it and they feel, everybody feels so good. <laughs> so, well, and I tend to so, think, and, and those those that don't live in New York City, I've been to New York City, and I'm moving to New York City actually in six years. I'm in Wisconsin. That's my home base, but I'm moving there. And I tell people this all yeah. the time. Move to New York City. You won't have a problem with exercise anymore. Just go over to the Javits Center and then try getting anywhere. Literally, you'll yeah. be walking and walking and walking for miles. It's like insane. But yeah. it's great exercise. I mean, great places to run, great places to walk, great scenery. Well, I'm biased. But Obviously, I think I'm going to go back to the two miles of running. I used to run two miles every day, and I won't lie. Now that I have my picture taken a couple of times, it scares me. I mean, like, seriously, I don't even want to be – I literally don't want my picture taken anymore because I feel like that flap, you know, that Dunlap disease in the middle of my stomach where that, like, laps over, whatever. Yeah, I've had kids, and I can't get rid of it. So I'm like, yeah, exercise could help. I I definitely think anybody, even if you don't eat as well as you should, if you are physically taking care of your body – and not just physically, but as we're talking about mentally and physically kind of work hand in hand together, I think that's a huge proponent um, for feeling better and obviously it doesn't have to be necessarily. Just so that people understand, your definition of holistic is, do you know what I mean? Because I've talked to other people and their definition of holistic goes along with holistic food products, holistic living, and all sorts of things. Do do you know what I mean by that? I do. So, I I mean, I am a believer of the the holistic living, which which really constitutes, I guess, different areas of your life. I think um, what you put into your body, so your food, sleep, um, if you're a meditator or some form of meditation, that's a great thing, exercise, and your relationships. I think relationships are a really, really valuable part of our life. It doesn't have to be the intimate relationship. It can be just friendships right. or community or something like that. That's also a really proven you know, if you look into any of the Blue Zone stuff, I love their material. Um, and they look at the people who have the longest lives. They've studied longevity throughout the world. And community and relationships is one of the number one things. And I know when I was studying nutrition, you know, my nutritionist teacher was just like, if everybody had great relationships, we wouldn't have a weight problem. <laughs> I was like, oh, ah, no. very well put. <laughs> That's like awesome, though. No, really, that is. That's an awesome. That's an awesome mindset, and I don't want to forget to mention this. Now, those that are listening that don't know this, you've taken all of these different things that you believe and what you think and obviously all part of your program, and you've put it onto a DVD for sale. And so those that might be interested in purchasing the DVD, what are they going to get out of that? Can you tell them just some of the elements that they can look forward to by purchasing that? Sure. So it's called Mindset Reset, and it really is a mindset reset process. It's a seven-step process that guides you through – um, a, a whole mindset process, particularly around a specific goal that you might want to achieve. So it, it takes mm-hmm. you into the future where you get to vision it, and then you look at what you have already to make it happen. That's one of the things I think people underestimate the most is what they have. You think of a goal and you're automatically in that place of, yeah, but, you know, but you, right. you don't always look at, oh, well, I actually do have this, or I know this person, or I have that, and so we'll look at that. We'll look at maybe what you need. We'll look at what's stopping you. We'll do a little 
believe burning, and then we'll come up with some action steps. So by the end of the DVD, I'll have one specific or two specific action steps that you can go out and do. And at the very end, there's also a short little meditation, so you can kind of center yourself in that way too. So it's... um, it is a cardio exercise, but there's also a low impact. You can you can do the modified version, okay. which is 100% fine. You could sit on your couch and just listen to it and still get to something out of it, but I'd prefer that you move. <laughs> so, gotcha. Um, no, I understand. It's a whole mindset I... and exercise program, and if you're just starting out, it's it's great. If you want to, like, really get a workout, you can do the super high impact and take it farther. So there's a nice range for all levels of, of people. That's awesome. Now, just out of curiosity, and I'm going to hold you to that with... two miles. When are you going to start doing those two miles? I'm not going to let you off this one because you said it live Uh-oh. in front of your 61,000 viewers. So so how's that going to happen? That's called accountability, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes, just love it that. Is. Now that I threw it out there, that means i got to do it. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, now that I'm off the heart monitor, it'll make it a lot easier because when I was wearing the heart monitor, I went to New York City with it. And originally yeah. they thought it was going to be 30 days, and now I just got off of it. So they said, obviously, Ooh, no strength yes. exercise, blah, blah, blah. I am taking a stress test at, at the end of the month. But for right now, I don't see any reason why I couldn't start at ASAP like this weekend. I, I mean, my kids are gone. I don't have an issue with that. And I have a little more free time. I, as I said, when I saw this movie about Dr. Sarno, it really opened my eyes about you're doing too much and you need to slow down and you need to deal with your demons and you need to start doing stuff that's going to make you healthier and happier. And it's hundred percent right. You know? Um, so I, I have to make this a priority and I, and I know that. And I think every woman has to get to that point and people like yourself offering things such as this kind of bring it to light, like literally put a lamp in front of their face and say, now let's take a look at this. And, and these are fun things that you're offering. These are not things mm-hmm. where women have to give up their lives to do it. Um, they get to see you which I don't, boo, I'm a little jealous, because you really are radiant. I don't think you really realize how radiant you really are. But um, I, I think I'm, I'm very impressed by the fact that you've been able to put together a program that's successful, and it's actually not anything that's too committal for a woman like most of us who are too busy to do things. And it really brings to light some stuff that we never think about. So it, really we should be thanking you for putting something like this together for us. Um, but no, I'm going to yeah, start running you. this weekend. You won't see that because I so won't be is, in New York. What, but I am mean, what is running me? Are you going to do a quarter mile or are you going to do like five minutes? Well, what I like, tend to safe, do is I live. Because you want to be safe let and let's see. start. Don't let's not get hurt out of right. the gate. Let's like, be smart. Right. Well, I live right by the river. So like in Wisconsin, the river's in the backyard. So I live right within the confinements of like, um, if you went about, oh, I don't know, about a mile away from my house, you would hit the parkway. So literally, I could leave my house and I could literally be go jogging along, um, you know, and doing all sorts of good stuff and, and literally just spend probably one mile just running around the neighborhood and then maybe going to the park for a mile. The park is nice scenery. You know what I'm talking about? So I think it would be nice. Uh-huh. And I live in a neighborhood where, like, I don't even lock my door. I probably shouldn't say that live. That's awesome. But, no, I live in a neighborhood <laughs> where nobody comes. I mean, you have to get to my house, you'd have to spend 10 minutes walking. And if you really want to rob me after you walk 10 minutes, have at it because I really don't have anything. I have four kids. That should tell you something. I'm broke as a joke a lot of the time. But you know what, I, you know what I'm saying. So – you know, I think it's realistic. I also like to, like, go down to the lakefront or, like, Pewaukee Lake. We have a couple of lakes here. I'll do that. New York will be where I do my optimal walking and running because there's so much, you know, there's so many nice places to go running, walking, et cetera. It's a neat endeavor. So, um, you know, okay, I don't so you're going to email me out. on Monday, and you're going to tell me Ouch. that you did this, right? Look at her. Look at her. She's, she's snapping on me on accountability. Uh, yes, I can email you once you give me your email and send me your information. I'd be more than happy to. If you gave me your number, I would text it to you. I'm very big on okay. – um, this is very important to me. It, it truly is, and I think it has a lot to do with the movie I saw. It has a lot to do with the fact that I keep getting these messages. You're, I'm a believer in signs. There's a reason why mm-hmm. Cheryl came to me to say interview you because you had a message. I was given that ticket because there was a message. I believe there are signs everywhere. And I'm very blessed because the people that come on my show, I just get tingles when I interview people. Not because I get to write a show and script a show, but because I get to meet people who make a difference in people's lives. You have been able to touch yeah. people by walking onto a screen. And now you touch people all of the time because you make their lives better. Um, but I'll save that for this last part. I'm going to read through a bunch of places where people can find you because I, I okay. don't want to think that I forgot about this. So let's just do this. You are on okay. Facebook. You have a personal page. And I sent you a friend request yesterday. So you'll see my pretty face. And then you'll see how fat I am. And then you'll be like, now I get it. 
So she does have a Facebook page, and her last name, it's Sonia, S-O-N-I-A. The last name is spelled S-A-T-R-A. She also has her modicized page as well. So you'll actually see her Sonia Satra and then modicized page on there. At Twitter handle is at Sonia Satra. Her Instagram is Sonia Satra underscore, and then I'll spell out modicized. It's M-O-T-I-C-I-S-E. The website itself, www.modicized.com. She's on YouTube, LinkedIn. She has a Wikipedia page, an IMDb profile. She's also on Pinterest and I believe Google+. Plus. Any place that I'm missing? No, I think you got that. That was great. And come join us for the oh. hashtag Better Life Chat on Tuesday at 11. Well, yeah. Oh, I almost forgot about that, the Twitter handle. And, and I'll, what I do normally is, just to, to let you know and your fans and your followers, usually about two hours after we finish this show, it becomes archived. I'll send a copy to you and to Carol so that this way you can go ahead and post it up when it's finished. And then people can actually listen to it at any point in time because oftentimes people aren't home at noon or whatever the case may be. So they won't get a chance to listen live, which is unfortunate. Now, my last question before I wrap up the show is, before I forget to tell people, in the past you've done modeling and commercial work, you've done theater acting, you've produced two plays. So I have to ask mm-hmm. you, I'm very curious if you'll ever go back to that, because I could certainly see you doing a play or some form of theater acting. Yes. I, you know, every once in a blue moon I still do a show, Vanities, with uh, Heather Tom and her sister. And uh, it's a kind of a strange, we do these run outs, so we'll go into a random city for a weekend or a day or a week, and we'll do it. So every once in a while, I still do that, and um, I certainly leave the door open for all kinds of opportunities. I still have a love of acting, so if the right thing comes up, I, would, I wouldn't, I never say never. <laughs> Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, this is good. So the very last thing that we do um, on my show is I get a chance to tell my guests what I think of them. That would be you, Sonia. But before I forget, I just want to do a couple quick things. I want to do a big shout-out to Carol, um, and I don't want to say her last name, Imperielli. I hope that I'm saying that Mm -hmm. right, Carol, and I'm so sorry if I'm not. Carol, from me to you, I have to tell you, Sonia was absolutely far more wonderful than I could have ever imagined. I cannot thank you enough for making this connection, and I have you in my thoughts and prayers every day as well because, of course, Carol has, has had some things happening in her life, and I think she's an amazing individual, and thank you, God, for connecting us yes. on the PRZR page. So, Carol, thank you so much for the connection here. I really super appreciate it. Now, before you, Sonia, I get to tell you what I think of you. I have an invitation, and I'll beg if I have to. So one of the things that I do is this year I launched my very first independent film festival, which is going to be New amazing. York City, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And it's happening in the next couple of months. And so one of the things that I always do when people come on my show that I find are uber talented and have experience in the field is I beg and I plead with them and I say, hey, Sonia, you know, you have been on television and you've been in film and God, how I wish I, if I asked really, really super nice if you would come and talk on a panel at my film festival because I'll just sit there and stare at you. Sort of. That sounded creepy. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm meaning you can come and talk and be like, okay. No, meaning that I like to have people of diverse backgrounds, meaning you have done both the theater and the play thing, but you've also done TV and you've also done film. A lot of people that come to these film festivals are, are yearning for knowledge that people have in different genres and fields and things that they're not going to get going to other places. So I really try to approach people that I know will have a benefit to them, be able to distill some knowledge that they have. So – you know, you don't have to make a commitment right now. Think about it. I can send you the details. But I'd love it if you'd entertain the idea of being part of it. it would be oh, wonderful. my God. I'd be honored to be part of it. Thank oh, you. Yeah, send me the details. Yay. Of course. I like yeah. those. I absolutely <laughs> like those. Okay. Now I get to tell you what I think of you so you get to sit there and listen for like 60 seconds. And the reason that I do this is because most people that listen to my show have maybe even not seen some of the work you've done before, not known about some of these entities, and they don't get a sense of who you are. So based on all the research I've done, everything I've read, what I've seen and watched, these are my impressions of you. So here goes. Yesterday, when I finished up doing all my research and writing out my script, and by the way, this is the only part of my show, this is non-scripted. So you know that I am telling you the truth because these are just hard thoughts, and that's all they really are. Mm -hmm. Um, When I started scripting the show yesterday, I can always tell when I'm very genuinely excited about meeting someone because I'll... I literally will spend every single moment making sure every word, every thought, and every topic that's discussed is pertinent. Why? Because I have a passion for the person coming on. 
first of all, I first got to know you by watching you on television, like most people do on a soap opera. And we all kind of think we know who you are, but clearly we don't most of the time we'll get a chance to meet you or talk to you. Today I got the gift of being able to speak to you. And one of the first things that I found out about you is that the beauty within of you is radiant. And I can see it and I can feel it. I could feel it when I was reading the words on your website. And the way that you talk about your business, your family, and the things that are important to you honestly tells me that you're a woman of high intellect and high integrity. It's very impressive to me. You've carved out a whole other life for yourself outside of acting. Not to say that you don't wish to act, but that you've built a business and you've built a benefactor to other women. Again, very empowering, very impressive. I'm very impressed by the fact that you are very straightforward. You know your stuff. You know how to be able to be honest about the things that you are weaker about in life. You are a true survivor, a true success story. I could only be so humble as to have the opportunity to be in the same room with you. And I do hope that that happens when I come to New York City. And I cannot thank you enough for coming on. And know that my stage and my platform is open to you anytime you like. Oh, my God. That was so beautiful. Thank you. But it's so honest. I mean, there's no point. You know, there's a reason why I tell people this stuff. So that they know. I mean, you know, I'm I'm betting most of the time you don't get that pat on the back. And sometimes people need to hear that. So even if I never speak to you again, even if I don't ever talk to you again, you'll know from me to you this is exactly what I think. And, well, 60,000 other people when they get around to it. But I, really, truly, this was a <laughs> blessing. I, I cannot thank you enough. I really enjoyed my time with you, truly. And please consider coming. I, I mean, you don't have to. Certainly I will have a very definitely. Busy schedule, but no, I would love it. please, please. Send the information my way, and I will also well, send you my email so you can send me on Monday an email that you ran, right. and we are going to be in touch. Yeah. And if you get here in New York, we are going to see each other. <laughs> it's a done deal. That would be absolutely Thank lovely. You. I would appreciate that without a doubt. And you have a wonderful afternoon. I'm going to go hang out with my daughter. Thanks again, and I'll be in touch shortly. You got it. Thank you. Take All right, care. dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tell me she wasn't fascinating, right? And then I probably sounded like a real freak because I was doing the whole, oh, my God, I love this girl thing, but I do. Sonia Safra, I cannot, I, I just, I hope I got my point across to you. So, again, all the ways to find her once again, the website is www.modisize.com. She is on YouTube, LinkedIn. She has an IMDb profile, Wikipedia, Pinterest. Her Instagram is Sonia Satra and then underscore Modicize. And again, that's spelled M O T I C I S E. Her Twitter is at Sonia Satra. And of course, the Facebook, again, it's Sonia Satra Modicize page. That's her business page. And then she has a personal page, which is again Sonia and the last name S A T R A. We do not want to forget one more time to mention. Carol Imperioli, for those of you that are looking for either publicity or uh, event management or just about anything, she is one of the most delightful PR people that I've ever had the chance to work with for the first time, and hopefully we'll have a long-standing relationship. She does all sorts of things from media training, client liaisons, you name it, she does it. Again, I'll spell her name. It's Carol, C-A-R-O-L-E. Her last name is spelled I-M-P-E-R-I-A-L-E. And you can find her on Facebook. She has an actual page. It's Carol Imperioli Publicity Events, all one. Otherwise, come see me, and I'll be able to forward you her information directly. And, Carol, I hope you get a chance to hear this. I cannot thank you, thank you, thank you enough for connecting the two of us. You are right. She's lovely. Again, one more reminder to everybody, tune in tomorrow, 4.30 Central Standard Time. We're going to be having both Thomas Edward Hunter along with two of his band members are going to be coming on the show. Um, I want to just double-check and make sure I'm right. Uh, I don't have definitive names as of yet. I apologize. But David will be – or excuse me, Thomas Edward Hunter is going to be coming on. He's the guitar player along with playing keyboards for the band. And it looks like he's going to be having both his drummer and the lead singer coming on. And they are, again, of course, a foreigner tribute band. We'll play a little bit of their music, talk about some of their upcoming gigs. So that's it for me, folks. I'm going to go enjoy my time with my daughter. You have a great afternoon, and we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. You are a mighty fortress of supreme knowledge. Progressive Direct has not only revealed their rates, but those of their competitors. If you were any more in the know, you would be drowning in, you know, the know. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates because knowledge is power. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.